Okay, from the previous lesson, we left off with a com confusing function like this. Function x equals to 1 plus the square root of x squared divided by x plus 2 times 3 minus x, appropriately parentheses like this. And we later found out that do the domain of x is minus 2 to 3, okay? Yeah, exclusive. Yeah, we cannot include this two because it will get us a divide by zero and that certainly does not exist. Okay, so now that we have specified the domain, now the next step is really specifying the range of function x. And if you watch my previous lesson carefully, you probably have already known the range or at least you can see how I worked out the range. Okay, and I always want to say or at least I want to tell like students at this point in time that really for functions, you, what method you use to find the range varies from function to function. Now, there, is there a general way? Yes, possibly there's a general way if you use differentiation or if you are just plainly going to sketch out the graph. But is there a quicker way for each indoor visual function? I would say yes. Why do I say that? Because let's look at this function over here. It's 1 plus a square root of this, okay? Now, I know about square roots, or at least that, that when I tackle square roots for functions, we know that, that we are going to take the positive square root at, for function x to exist. For example, okay, let's just say the positive square root gives us something like this. Now, I can't, I can't take the, the, the negative square root. Why? Because that won't be a function. x gives me two values of y. That's not the case. What I can do is that I can write y equals to negative square root, sorry, y equals to negative square root over here, and this becomes a positive square root. I can do that. But for this case, I've got 1 plus a square root of a certain equation, okay? And looking by this, I would know that the range, okay, which we can normally write as the range of function fx, okay, belongs to, I know what the first value is. Okay, or at least I know what the lowest value is. And the lowest value is 1. Okay? Why do I say that? Because look at this here, square root. The lowest value that this can go, as I just explained just now, is 0. So it's, it's going to be 1 plus a certain number, whatever the number is. You know, that means the lowest number is going to be 0. Right? Uh, sorry, yeah, the lowest value of function fx is going to be 1. My, my mistake is going to be 1. Because the 1 is over here, so it will belong to inclusive of 1 and something else. So we want to find that, that something else, okay? And that is really by looking at this big function over here, okay? So this is normally how you analyze it going from the domain, okay? Going from the domain. I'll just write the square root or I'll let y, let's just y be equals to, okay, not to be ambiguous, we will just subtract this one over here. Sorry about the laziness in the algebra. Okay, we let y equals to x squared divided by x plus 2 and 3 take away x. Okay, we let y equals to this. So, basically, we want to find what is the minimum value. Well, we already know that the minimum value is 0, okay? And we want to find what's the maximum value, okay? Knowing that x is within the domain of here. So, what we normally do is that s, x tends towards minus 2 from the positive side, okay? Now, Let's see what we have. Remember what I said about isotopes, or at least what I tell you about isotopes now. Isotopes are simply points on the graph that does not exist. Now, what's an isotope in this case? An isotope is x equals to minus 2, which I will draw as a dotted line, and I'll put minus 2 over here, okay? Because if I put minus 2 inside here, I can't get a value of y or function x. It's invalid, okay? I can't divide by 0, okay? And also, the other isotope is over here, 3. Okay, this x over here. So these are the two isotopes. Now I know that being isotopes, that uh, the the equation, the graph will try to verge towards, or uh, yeah, will try to verge towards that isotope, but never reaching it. Okay, so that's why I say it's x x tends to negative two from the positive side. Okay, which is over here. Okay, I hope you see that minus two positive is here, minus two negative is here. So as I tend towards the isotope from the positive side. Okay, I get minus 2. Okay, first thing, let's handle this part. 3 minus minus 2 is 5. That's not a problem. Minus 2 squared is 4. Not a problem. Now, minus 2 plus 2 is tends towards 0. But what is a number that, that you divide, or at least that you're you are going to divide by a number that tends towards 0, where you get an infinitely large number. And so, this one tends towards infinity here, like that. Okay, now it begs to wonder, is it infinity plus or is it plus infinity or negative infinity? 
okay? Well, certainly we can see that it is plus infinity. Why? Because of positive and because of positive over here. That's why it is plus infinity. So x, sorry, so y tends towards this isotope over here. Likewise, we do the same reasoning for 3 as, as x tends towards 3, but now it's going to be 3 negative. Okay, I hope you see that because we are tending towards 3 from the negative side or from the left hand side. And likewise, the curve is going to verge towards this isotope here. So if we put in 3 inside here, we get positive. We get positive. 3 minus 3, it will tend towards 0. Okay, actually, uh, more, how to say, more strictly speaking, it will be 3 minus a certain number that is infinitely, infinitely less than 3. I hope you see that because we are tending towards 3, okay, and then we're going to take a number that is very close to 3. So, 3 minus that number, we will still get a positive number, okay, but it was also a positive 0 if there's such a term, a positive 0. So, again, divide by 0, you get an infinitely large number. Why? And using the same reasoning as before, is plus infinity. So, this tends towards infinity here, like that. Never reaching the isotope, I remind you again. So, it seems that the range of this over here, which is the range of y, okay, it would be 0, okay? 0, inclusive of 0 to infinity. And we'll just put that bracket over there because it's telling us that we can never reach infinity. Okay, and thus the range of this function over here is simply 1 plus whatever the range of this one is, okay, which is infinity. 1 plus infinity is infinity, and we will put it like that. And there you go, the range of, finding the range of the function fx is defined as over here. Okay, now I know the working is very little. Okay, honestly, the working is very little. And once you are acquainted with the methods, you can go boom, boom, boom. You know, you can as x, as x tends towards y, as x tends towards y, y tends towards y, and then do it very quickly. Okay, but I, I just want to emphasize again this is one of the ways for you to sketch the curve and really to find the range of a certain function, as I've shown you over here. Now, there's other ways which I believe I'll also show you in the subsequent lessons, but this is what you do. Finding isotopes, let x tends towards a certain number, and finding the range, and finding the, yeah, finding the range of curve. Okay? Yeah, hope you enjoyed. Thanks.